Hi everyone, a very good evening to all of you and welcome back to Successpedia Asia Resilience Series, Journey to Success Resilience Series. Yes, uh, it's a Saturday and I hope everyone uh, has a great weekend. You know, I'm not sure what all of you have been doing at home, but definitely going down to the park with all your friends and going down to the bar is definitely out of the picture, right? So um, yeah, and I hope all of you have uh, went to your window and started singing home uh, at 7.55 just now. I did. And I saw a lot of my friends, not friends, but I saw a lot of my neighbors uh, putting up their torchlight and I saw a lot of my friends putting up the post. So it has been a, a great and meaningful evening. And I hope that you are here with us. Um, looking forward to yet another day or another evening of great topic and content that uh, we are going to put up for you. Today, we are very, very honored to actually have with us uh, the Vice President of uh, Changi Airport Group. Uh, but it's not just about that that she's being invited. It's also because um she's uh more than that she's a a, a a runner a cyclist all right and a great lady a very successful lady uh and therefore we would like to know and we would like to invite her to find out more about how she is coping with uh the current COVID 19 situation and also as well as the circuit breaker so without further ado let me uh let us invite uh lisan polisan up on stage with us Hi, Lisan. Hello. Hi, Desmond. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for gracing our event. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, maybe, maybe you can start off with uh, an introduction to our viewers. All right. Hi, my name is Lisan. Um, I work in Changi Airport Group and currently I'm in charge of um, planning for specialized engineering for the new Terminal 5. And uh, like Desmond mentioned, I'm quite an avid runner and uh, also some other sports like cycling, uh, swimming, yoga in my free time. Yep. Oh, you, you, do, you do yoga. How, how many times do you do yoga every month? Before <laughs> COVID, it was about three to four times a week. And uh, in a way, thanks to the yeah, stay home um, circuit breaker months, um, I can actually do practice almost every day at home. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so just fun fact for you guys, which I didn't introduce. Um, Lisan is also one of our uh, very few female pilot back in the days. Uh, with You were piloting the Super Puma, right? Yeah, that's right. That was uh, actually my first career after I joined the RSAF, the Air Force, after my level, and uh, I became a helicopter pilot flying the Super Puma helicopter, and I was also um, doing search and rescue work. So I right. spent about uh, 16 years in the Air Force before I joined um, Chang Airport about 10 years ago. Wow. So 16 years flying the, the chopper or the helicopter. Uh, yeah. About 10 years was flying. The first part was studying, training, all of that. So for the flying, right. it was about 10 years. You, oh, I, I, okay, so how does it feel to be one of the few female figure in, in the pilot, uh, in the, sorry, in the Air Force or in Singapore itself piloting? Yeah, I mean, um, not, not that I'm, I'm being um, biased against gender, but I think it's something really very rare and unique. But you're right, uh, during my days, especially, uh, I began a helicopter pilot in the year 2000. So that was 20 years ago. So yep. those days, uh, I believe I'm the second female helicopter pilot in Singapore. So those days, I we only had maybe around five pilots in Singapore. Today, we definitely have four. I'm very happy that uh, many of the younger ladies have taken up the challenge and joined the Air Force. Um, even fighter pilots. Um, so in my time, um, yes, it's kind of a, I'll say, rare occurrence to be a female pilot. But really, once you start the engine takeoff, really nobody knows whether you're male or female, so long you can do the job well. Yeah, do, do you miss flying? Um, once in a while, I uh, oh. may dream about it, but I think for me, it's uh, ten, it was 10 very good years. I've uh, done a whole range of different missions, uh, 
um, also did many such a rescue mission, um, saving lives. Um, right. And also participated, I was uh, quite out Archie for two weeks. Oh, oh so you, you're part of the Arche mission? That's right. That was uh, back in 2004. And we, I sailed out in the second, second batch, uh, second deployment, and uh, sailed out over the New Year period. And with our Navy uh, ship tanker, we were hmm. based off Mulago. For, and I was there for about two weeks for a change of crew. So it was the right. uh, most, um, I guess, unforgettable experience in life that was uh, about 15 years wow okay so when you change when you move into uh changi group um did how, how was the change like um did you feel i how, how do i put it um how was it like to move from uh, a combat combat role to a uh, civil um admin i wouldn't say admin role lah, but uh not civil service but uh yeah. I, I don't know the term like when i o r d i, I step into the... uh, corporate role yeah 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 yes 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 corporate role yeah so uh i left when i was 35 years old and um it was well fortunately i was still very young and energetic so uh of course the, uh, yes. the switch over was a bit challenging uh first we spent 10 years in the air force and Without having any background in the corporate world, uh, there's a lot to learn. Learning, mm -hmm. learning curve was very steep. Um, and I was doing um, operations at that time. I was in charge of uh, entire, at that time we still had the budget terminal. So I was uh, in charge of operations of the budget terminal for uh, close to two and a half years before we closed it down, make way for terminal four. Then mm -hmm. after that, we into the planning development I, was, I led the planning development for the core project for about right. one and a half years ah i see oh uh we have someone coming in saying uh, thanks for sharing yes we, we haven't even gone to our our main point but thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> stay with us Reef. stay with us yeah <laughs> yes yeah so so it was really really tough uh to to have to go through such change in 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 the life, right? In, I, in the I life. won't say it's really, really tough. It's just everything you have to learn and I have to learn in a double quick time uh, because I was already in sort of in a heat management room. So I uh, just oh. had to pick up knowledge and skills uh, in a very quick time. Um, but right. I had uh, good people, very, very helpful colleagues around me, company, and the work was interesting. So that made it a lot easier. So I it's see. been uh, 10 years now since I joined at the airport. So one thing oh, wow. is that in common is still in the aviation uh, space, aviation industry. Mm -hmm. I think at least that helped quite a fair bit. Understanding of flying of uh, operations still more or less the same. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I went through something similar of a change before uh, from, from the military uh, as an instructor and then I moved into M uh, MOE. Yeah, so, but the, the common point was uh, as an instructor is, and whether be a teacher or instructor, is still giving, uh, teaching others about life, about about education, about knowledge. So it's imparting knowledge. So I think that was, I think we found something common for the transition. Mm. For, for you, it will be aviation. La. So it, it's not something so. Yeah. So well, yeah. the big change is military to corporate, uh, but the common strand is still in the aviation world. Aviation, uh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So and I have some, well, common friends inside uh, ah. the CAG, so that kind of helps. Mm. Okay. So talking about change, um, we have mm -hmm. we have gone through a very huge change, a big change in in Singapore, in the world, in Asia, everywhere. You know, it is really a big change. So um, yeah. the COVID nineteen has put up a uh, something a drastic change to everyone's life so but in your opinion how do you see the current uh, pandemic situation well it's still i would say the situation is still evolving um like you rightly said it's 
taken everyone uh, by a big shock by surprise. Uh, no one is bad global situation and because the infection rate is very high, uh, it's really, really developed very quickly and uh, unfortunately many people have been infected and uh, more than 200,000 people have already lost their lives because of this worldwide. So uh, this is really unprecedented on a global scale and uh, I think this is uh, uh, something that uh, many people are still trying to make sense of why did it happen and how do we uh, carry on next six months, one year, and how would life change after post-COVID days? Mm, yeah. So in talking about post-COVID, um, in terms of economy, how do you see um, the Singapore moving, uh, especially when we are about to, to exit this COVID? Uh, COVID situation in going into post COVID, going into the rebound stage of the economy. So how how do you see it? Well, first of all, is I think it's a bit too early to tell uh, how long this will last. Um, mm. People are saying that maybe a vaccine may be available in the next by end by early next year or eighteen months or so. So we've got a long way to go. Um, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, I think we, we do need to stay positive and think ahead about uh, how our economy just uh, to cope the impact of COVID in the short to medium term as well in the long term for recovery. So I think in the short and medium term, obviously, uh, many, many sectors have been badly, badly affected. Uh, for one, I mean, the aviation sector. Mm. And uh, we have read reports, the uh, traffic has dropped uh, drop 98 percent last month that's close to zero especially because we have no domestic flights uh, mm. the borders are all shut so so that's that's a huge hit for the aviation industry as well as uh, tourism uh, entertainment and uh, when uh, local transport like taxi grab all this have been so badly hit and of course in the last couple of weeks because of the uh, Circuit breaker measures. Yep. Many other businesses have been hit, but hopefully this will be for the really for the short term for the other other businesses. And once circuit breaker is lifted, then hopefully things will go back to a greater sense of normalcy. Um, but I think um, there's different sectors in the economy that are uh, suffering in a sense at different degrees. But at the same mm -hmm. time, I think we don't need to be passive. There are also many sectors that are booming now. I yes, yes. Sector, uh, everybody is trying to, to connect each other with uh, digital tools online. Um, the healthcare industry obviously has also uh, been very busy. Uh, suppliers of medical equipment uh, mm. and bread food delivery. Um, yep. Very, very busy, working very hard. And uh, so, so amidst all this gloom and doom, there are some um, silver linings around and uh, sectors that still need people, essential services, work very hard to keep the economy coming and going. So I, I think for, for the rest of us, while we have this hiatus, this call a bit of a hibernation period, we really need to think a bit uh, ahead of how COVID will change the way we work. Um, there, I think there will be some very permanent, very deep changes um, because in the midst of coping with this um, social distancing measures, uh, we've learned new ways, new processes of getting work done of business. So for example, I think um, a lot of work processes like working from home via video calls, like what we are doing now, um, yep. for students, home-based learning. Um, all this have uh, now just rapidly taken on and I think that's actually not a bad thing. Um, and in future, after COVID, I'm quite sure people would realize that there are some benefits um, of working from home, of home-based learning, and that may change the way we work in 
future. Maybe, um, you know, flexible work arrangements uh, will be a lot more prevalent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and of course, for many businesses, especially those that uh, like in f and uh, COVID has just forced everyone to really go online. So e-commerce is really taking off even more so uh, than pre-COVID. Pre so uh, a lot of businesses are really trying to pivot at this point in time, offer their services, uh, restaurants will take away, and um, retail continue to deliver um, your consumer goods via online platform. So, yep. so this will drive um, more companies to realize how, it is, how important it is for digital and hopefully get up because actually as a country we have been already on this journey for the past few smart nation all these initiatives but i think covid will just accelerate everything and uh the last part i think that will um, hit the economy or rather also um, i say drive a transformation in the economy would be uh, looking at using more automation more robotics because mm. um, also mainly because of the, uh, in the, the, the recent spike in uh, amounts of foreign workers. Yeah. Uh, I think we also realized that, well, we need to speed up again our focus on getting more automation in a lot of the work processes. Um, for example, in the airport, we have started some of this work in our new terminals, uh, right. Right. automated machines and uh, in fact, I, I was working on a project that is uh, on a robotics project, luggage. Um, so things like that will speed up and help us reduce reliance on the human what workers doing the engineering, yeah, doing the manual work. So, so I, I see these are uh, positive uh, spin-offs that actually arise from COVID. Um, mm. so I think this will be the trends that we hear to stay. Right, right. So automation, um, e-commerce, digital, AI, all these are the, the things that's going to, to uh, continue. The, the great things that, that comes out of, of something, the darkest hours. Lah. Yeah, in a way. In a way. I in mean, a way. it just, it just uh, motivate people to adopt because we see the need for, for automation uh, even mm. stronger than ever before. So I right. hope, yeah, even post-COVID uh, efforts to innovate, um, automate will be even stronger. Mm. Okay, so yeah, so we, we mentioned about the economy and the business and, and things that people people will adopt. So how about the lives of people? How how do you think the people around you have been affected? And then after that, how yourself have been affected? Right. But I'll speak maybe a bit more in general. Um, or people around me, I think um, maybe you can look at it in three aspects. So the first aspect would be physically how people have been affected uh, mm -hmm. and then psychologically and finally financially. So physically, obviously, uh, COVID because of the high infection rate uh, and uh, the ability to spread, even being as asymptomatic, uh, this has forced people to go into social distance. And that's very counterintuitive to human nature. Um, people like to be social, they like to be near each other, and uh, getting people not to go out, to be far apart from each other, wearing a mask and not being able to, you know, uh, actually engage each other it's, it's a big change and i think the biggest um the, the biggest change you feel is during festive season so for yeah. example recently um we have uh, started the ramadan month holy yep. month of ramadan amongst the uh, muslim community uh, it's very different this year it's very tough uh, not to be able to break fast with the community, with a bigger family. And uh, a couple of weeks before, during Easter, again, no church congregation um, mm -hmm. for the very first time. And uh, I think also last week when we had the, the, the Tamil uh, year, um, 
can't really celebrate as well. So, you know, these are these are the times when people really feel that the very uh, strong impact of social distancing, and I think that also helped us appreciate uh, our families, our loved ones, even more because now we don't take for granted. Um, mm. You know, yes. having them around is actually such a precious. So that's right. on, on on physical. <clears throat> um, in terms of psychology, um, I think for the elderly, especially uh, especially the elderly who live alone uh, or elderly who live in nursing home, uh, it's a very tough period as well because uh, we are advised not to um, meet the elderly, not to visit them in the nursing home to help to protect them, reduce that chance of infection. So for them, that has a big psychological effect on on their well-being um, they don't see their family for a while and they may not understand what happened outside the nursing home they may mm. not understand there is a very nasty virus that's going around infecting people and, and that will that will actually cause uh, quite a lot of uh, hardship i think a lot of um, emotional stress yeah, yeah. on them so I, I think that's something we really have to look out for uh, right. And hopefully the elderly are also resilient enough to get through this period. Uh, and of course, uh, on the other hand, for even a younger family, uh, this two months of circuit breaker, forcing everybody to stay at home all the time, especially we, all of us, we don't, most of us, we don't stay in very big uh, houses. All of yes. us, you know, a lot of us stay in very tiny apartments. We don't really have that much personal space. So mm. uh, people may tend to even his own family, you know, step on each other's toes and <laughs> rise thereafter. So so these are things that um, are unfortunately unintended and longer term psychological impact uh, because of all these social issues. And and it takes a bit of time <clears throat> before it can manifest in deeper problems. So I think we all have to be sensitive about um people who are going through all this psychological anxiety and stresses that uh, it's not so straightforward, it's not so easy. Mm, right. Mm. Yeah, I, yes. Financially, I think financially, uh, it's been very hard on uh, especially the uh, family, uh, the lower income, the lower middle income families don't have much savings. Type. Their jobs may be affected, income may be affected. So mm. it's not easy. Uh, they may be very worried about how they're going to pay the next bill and bring food on the table. So that's uh, can also cause psychological stresses on on. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I I <clears throat> I really ag I agree with every the, all the three points that yeah, they made mention, especially the point of uh, for the old age. In fact, I know I I know of some people who are trying to create content for the old age. You know, for the the old folks that is uh, alone, you know, the family uh, uh, don't have time and unable to visit them. But because of the whole COVID, and then uh, and you know, the old folks they they are not very tech savvy, and yeah. is in the old folks home, and so the the, the way to engage them becomes more difficult and. Uh, these few content creators are struggling and we are not allowed and they are not allowed to go out there to do filming and, and mm -hmm. stuff to create content for these old folks so yeah so we hope that this circuit breaker can end quickly and then uh and these few people can can bring great content to, to all these old folks yeah yeah and and also the the in terms of psychological that you have mentioned so on Monday, if I'm not wrong, I think Monday, I sell a bit of goyo for myself again. So I think Monday or Tuesday, uh, we have a psychologist coming up on, on air to share how to manage anxiety. Yeah, uh -huh. and not just that, tomorrow we have uh, Mary Chu to come on board to share anxiety of pets. Oh. So, yeah. So anxiety is something that I, I 100%, 101% agree with you that in this period of time, uh, everyone is going through things that will cause anxiety will cause depression will cause struggles in their daily lives so yeah i think you're very very sharp to to catch that yeah, yeah I, so, I think we just have to be a bit more sensitive about what's going on us put ourselves in the shoes of other people um mm. 
may have a much harder time through this period. Yep, yep. Talking about that, how about yourself? How different are you facing anxiety or, or with another change in your life, the lifestyle? So how, how different is it, your old routine versus the new routine? I must say uh, I'm very blessed that I still have a job to do. Uh, I can work from home and generally I'm not so badly affected. Uh, mm. I think it's a lot tougher for friends who have essential workers or who are involved in uh, fighting this COVID and very active uh, people. So for me, it's been more of an adjustment from, um, I used to be very, um, how should I say, out, outbound. Mm. Now 180 degrees change to being homebound. So before COVID, uh, most of the time I'm hardly at home, uh, probably just back home, uh, take a shower and go to bed. And then right. the next day I'm out early again. So now I literally spend almost about well, 24 hours at home. So that that has uh, has changed a fair bit, but just a couple of days to get used to it. not too bad for too long. And uh, in terms of work, continue to uh, work from home, uh, again using technology, using video conference call. I can still connect with my colleagues, uh, still get work done. Um, the only thing is that um, it's much more difficult now to, to sense the, how the colleagues are doing, the morale of the team, because in the video, you can't really see them. And, uh, sometimes they're not even on the video call, it's just voice. Um, yeah, yeah. Keep and we flow. So, so the things that uh, there are some pros and cons, it's quite productive in the sense I don't have to travel back and forth. So I see about an hour a day traveling. But um, there are some limitations, uh, questions and meeting on the via calls. Sometimes it's not as clear and you don't get people's body language. You understand their issues. Um, so that's, that's for work. Um, and um, the other part is, of course, for work, it's also important to start thinking about how COVID has changed. Uh, for, for me, I'm doing planning, so it's how COVID has changed our many of our fundamental assumptions on long-term planning. So that right. requires quite a long, quite a fair bit of um, of thinking and rework, and and uh, really hard at the different scenarios of how future of our work and plans will change. Uh, mm. so so do you prefer do you prefer to work from I would I think I think maybe that is the wrong question. So I should ask what is the thing that you miss the most um from before and after in, in terms of work work wise going to work, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think it's really that sense of social interaction and uh, being in the in the big group in a company where you really feel the camaraderie now it's a bit like yeah we have the team but yet you are alone. so it's a bit strange um, so yeah yeah so far for a short term but this cannot completely replace going into the office with a place for physical contact so me mm, right right so it's really so near yet so far right so you the, yeah the kind of you, know, you you are there but not there and then Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then how about how about um if we if we don't talk about work about your own own life I mean I see your bicycles behind so yeah. uh do you have more time to run do you have more time to to cycle you know how how is is it better or is it not as I, good as before I would say what I've gotten extra time from the traveling to a bit longer workouts so I still keep. More or less the same routine daily. Um, even before COVID, I exercise in the morning every day before I go to work. So I now with COVID, uh, I still do that on a daily basis. Get up in the morning, get up for a run or for a bike ride, then be home in time for the meeting starting at nine o'clock. So that part hasn't quite changed. Um, 
But I suppose uh, by staying at home throughout, it's just, uh, I think for me, uh, the important part to get me through is to have a routine, a very structured lifestyle. So mm. I still keep myself busy and engaged. So um, you don't feel like it's such an extraordinary period. It just feels like, okay, except instead of working in office, of traveling it's just that everything is based at home and uh, i try to live life as normally as possible um right yeah the good thing i think is uh when i'm at work then a lot of meals are eaten outside so now at home there's a good opportunity to eat very healthily during this month once so i'm trying to keep to that uh, healthy practice now right Bring Home cooked food, right? Home food, yeah. Do you cook? <laughs> I, don't, I don't, so I uh, bring my tin cut along to uh, collect food. So, ah. that's, yeah, from my aunt's place, uh, she's quite nearby, so she cooks. So, that's, uh, that's been a blessing, and I am able to uh, uh, experience or enjoy home cooked food for this feel a lot healthier. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think I think during this period, I cook more than I I cooked uh for the past few months. Yeah, I I stop I stop um I stop stepping into the kitchen ever since I closed down my hawker. <laughs> I used to run a hawker for about ten months. So oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was selling seafood bihun actually. Oh, so. Yeah, yeah. So, but ever since I stopped that, uh, there has been, I wouldn't say a phobia, but I, there's a resistance for myself to step back into the kitchen, honestly speaking. I mean, this is something that not many people will know, but now I'm openly sharing it, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but this, this period has actually brought me back to the kitchen, you know, uh, and I started, I started cooking for my family, started cooking for my kids uh, all over again. La. <laughs> yeah. Part about this period is also because you know, things uh now there's very well no social interaction. Um for me I, I before that I was really involved in community work, uh so I'm unable to do community work. So the, the time that I have now I can actually spend it uh, more reading, more self reflection and uh catch up with um things that I never had time to do. So I think uh, it's also actually I, I I quite kind of treasure this period now. Uh, yeah. It's a very precious period where you have a lot of me time, a lot of time to things that you always think. Oh, I, I want to do this. I want to yeah, some spring cleaning the house and stuff like that. So I try to make full use of this period. Right, right. More more reading as well, right? Do you? Do you, yeah. you and also, um, I make sure that I, I also call my folks, I call my parents uh, on a daily basis to check on them. Mm -hmm. See, are they okay? Check with friends. Make sure that uh, while I'm staying at home, the connection doesn't stop. Like family, friends, via um, WhatsApp, via phone calls, and that's very important. Right, right. So before we move into a sensitive topic, uh, and we, you were mentioning families, right? So um, I'm just wondering, how do you stay positive? Is it is it through all these connections with your family, like um, meeting your aunt, getting the food from your aunt, and then uh, your cycling, your your routine that keeps you positive? Or do you have other strategies to stay positive? I think it's really no one thing, combination of uh, few different uh, approaches or strategies you call that. So most importantly, I think uh, having a routine, healthy routine, does make me feel good. You know, having enough rest, uh, feel having enough exercise, feeling feeling fit, eating healthily. That mm. that is firstly the the physical aspect of feeling positive. And beyond that, I think is also. Um, being very selective in reading the material that uh, true. So for example, everybody is like, I think for the past three months, you turn on the radio, it's all about COVID. 
yes. number of people dying in this country, that country. You read the newspaper uh, or online articles, it's all about COVID and recently about countries, uh, you know, accusing each other. So all these are negative, very negative vibes. I think you have to decide for yourself what information you want to consume. If, it, if you feel that getting uh, is getting on you, it's really uh, affecting how you feel, like feeling very down, very passive about the future. Then I'll say we have the power in our hands to stop consuming mm. such negative information and look out for more positive uh, news of kind acts, you know, kind volunteering volunteering groups that are helping people on the ground. So, so I think there are different ways to look at basically uh, looking at this uh, half glass pool rather than half glass empty approach. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's um I think that's one important way and more and the, and the last one is of course knowing that uh, you're never all of us are affected, equally affected. No one is better off than the other. Uh, so we are all going through this together, crisis together. So we have to play our part to stay positive. And hopefully the whole country get out of this first the speed breaker and later on recovery the economy step by step. Yeah. So don't look far in, too far in the future and thinking, oh, how would it be? How would it affect my work? And how would it affect my job? And income and things like that. Just one step at a time. One step at a time, right? One step at a time. Yeah. You know, when I when you were mentioning about um digesting the uh, reading up or going into a something reading more positive things, right? I maybe let me just share a little bit. Um, today I was really reading some positive news, but uh, it was on the internet. But then the comments by the people, by the keyboard warriors or or the netizen they call it, a lot of negative negative uh uh. Uh, review a lot of negative comments you know uh i got sucked into it honestly speaking i couldn't resist but to retaliate and tell 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 them off saying that it was something related to about uh the 955 uh 755 singing so there are people saying you know like um oh singing can't cure can't stop the virus singing can't cure us you know singing can't help so i really couldn't resist but to go in there and tell them straight up front um uh singing is not the cure but no one is saying singing is the cure is to uplift the spirit uplift the community you know so that everyone stand united rather than uh we feel we are alone yeah so but yeah it's so but I, i'll be honest it's really so difficult to to just look away not to be affected by all these negative negative comments yeah all right so um yeah talking about positivity and 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 um the initiative i mean the singing 755 singing i just want to hear from you how do you think um yeah maybe how do you think singapore is doing now do you think we are doing a good job well i think <laughs> We are, no, no country is spared from this uh, you know, uh, outbreak and every every government, every society is trying to get a grip on the situation. Um, for us, I would say that so far I've been very heartened uh, by kind of response, both at the government level as well as the ground up level on, uh, on how how responsive and how caring we are in the whole the whole uh, approach to deal with COVID nineteen. So I would say we could imagine an analogy. We are almost like uh, all in one boat and stranded in the middle of a big ocean. So mm. when the first wave uh, of COVID outbreak mainly from China hit us. It was just one small wave that we could still deal with it very quickly and manage to 
contain the situation. But in a matter of few weeks, when everywhere else in the world experienced that outbreak from Europe, America, all over the world, Middle East, and we have lots of returning Singaporeans and also other people living in Singapore. Then it's like many tidal waves that's coming in from all directions and trying to flood us, trying to drown us. And we have to paddle really hard. Everybody in the boat, they are float, they are alive. And if, um, and we have all to do this together in a very united way. Everybody have to work really hard in order to get through this. And government plays the leadership role to tell us which direction to get out. And well, we all have to listen, follow instructions, stay at home, you know, practice social distancing in order to get out of this situation together. The moment one or two person starts to fall behind, do something differently in a different direction, uh, then we get all dragged down. So really, I think there's a Chinese saying, it's really, it's really we are all in the same boat, trying very hard to get through. So um, I would say different countries have different approaches. Uh, there's no point comparing what one government does versus another government, what each country because everybody's situation is mm. it's not a race, it's not a competition. All we need to know is we are feeling united and are um, working hard as a people. There could be some minority, you know, saying the negative things like the one you mentioned earlier on. But by and large, I'm really, really heartened that as a people, as a country, general sense, general, general vibes very strong, very positive, very good. Mm, yep, yep. I think especially a lot of ground out in initiatives uh, that, yes. that we have seen, a lot of charities. And, so um, is there any any of these ground out initiatives or, or um, charities that you have seen that caught your eye? And yeah. Yeah, I think, for example, uh, what just happened is half an hour ago, uh, almost 20 minutes uh, an hour ago, with uh, Dick Lee and a uh, few celebrities uh, initiating this. Yes. I thought that was a very good uh, effort, very good rally call, get people to feel like getting all together and can help on the response. Um, so anyway, we are at home and all you need to do is go out there and sing along and yeah. Spreading the message of love, of support, of I think that's something awesome. Uh, you don't even need to do much; you just have to participate. And there are also um, companies uh, which have uh, really donated big sums, especially to help um, families, help people who are less well off, uh, get by this period, being free meals. Um, I think that's also very remarkable. Um, of course, the government has given uh, a big um, budget set aside for get uh, our people to help us keep jobs. Um, and the uh, grants in manners have also helped of um, um, workers who are affected. Uh, yes. Some employed persons. So at least this period is not as hard as it would have been if uh, even financially uh, in difficulty. So um, I, I think all these are really positive um, examples, positive display of uh, our willingness to share, our willingness to help each other yep. get through it. But do you think, do you think the government needs to support our people more or should it be the opposite? Um, the people supports the government more then things will start moving in, in a more fluid or positive manner. Which one comes first in your opinion? I, I don't think it's a really, question. <laughs> takes two hands clap. It's really the government people, we are all in it together. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's really, um, you know, this common spirit 
that we are resilient, we are united, uh, we are you know, in solidarity, cope with the situation, get around this and recover quickly. I think that is really the precious part about what has uh, you know, evolved out of the last few weeks. You see, Singapore never, I mean, we are a very blessed country, we hardly have any type of natural calamity. Uh, mm. you know, the last bad thing that happened probably was in 2003, SARS and um, great financial crisis 2008. So this right. is really the biggest, uh, in a way, human catastrophe that has happened. Uh, and for us, it's something that, uh, well, although it's not welcome, it's not uh, anyone's wish to have a COVID, um, there are good things that came out of this experience that uh, I think our generation of people will be tell in future to our younger generation. This was what happened in the year 2020. Uh, we all had to go through this difficult period, but we went through it as a united society, united people, and we helped each other along, and we built many strong friendships, and um, you know, we know that we have um, really uh, reached out to our fellow Singaporeans who are in a more difficult position. Uh, so I think this is something that is really, I would say, a precious thing that came out of the whole struggle, the whole challenge of, um, of COVID. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I, I also feel that it's a test. This is a test for us to go through it as a nation. Like you say, we don't have the natural uh, 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 disasters that, that we are prone to, no no hurricanes, no typhoon, and stuff like this, you know, no earthquakes. Yeah. So yeah, this is really really a test to to put us through. Which brings me to the point where um you mentioned about the singing and I mentioned a lot of times. So maybe we can show the viewers some of the not some, okay, just one, just one. Uh it's a friend of mine. So if he sees this, please don't come and you know, not on my door. Uh. You cannot uh, wear masks and come and knock on my door. <laughs> yeah, right. So this was something that... And then here we see after the aftermath where everyone in around the neighborhood it didn't just stop at the music it didn't just stop at the singing it didn't just stop at the flashlight so all singaporeans you can see in this video itself everyone is shouting all over flashing their torchlight at the windows you know yeah so it is truly truly an amazing sight uh and i didn't i didn't manage to catch uh, my own video around my area because I was panicking, you know, we, we just did our, our, our trial. So for the viewers, we had to do tech run before we come in live. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so, so we just finished it. So I went to my laptop trying to find it. And then I realized that my main television don't have channel 8, channel 5 because it's actually linked to my cable. 
So I have to run into the room, my own room, before I can watch the channel 8 channel, channel 5. So I panicked and then I was on my laptop. I went to gov.sg trying to find the video. And then by the time I start playing, Dick Lee just finished talking and then started playing. So I had no time, no reaction time to take videos and everything. It was really funny how how it was. Yeah, but it's very heartwarming. Yeah, it's five short minutes, but has a very, very big impact. Very long yeah. impact. It's a bit oh, like yeah. a... Were you at your window? MVP. Yes, 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 yes. Were you at your window? <laughs> did you did you manage yeah. to go to your window? Yes, yes, yes. You, you, you did, uh, yeah. you did. Uh. I also try to check out on the online news and think out and trying to see yeah, what's the, the neighborhood response and all. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I think these are really good um, examples of every now and then we have um, celebrities or people who Singaporeans know of and willing to come out and say, come on, let's do this together, let's stay united, let's go apart and let's hang in there, we'll get through the period. Um, so, so it's a good, um, I guess, good, uh, refreshing change also in a way, um, because we have our government, yes, the Prime Minister has spoken so many times, uh, to tell us, and each time the message is serious, it's uh, very, sometimes a bit heavy-hearted. So this kind of um, more, in a way, light-hearted, more motivating, more inspirational message or mm. action unity uh, does, help to, does help to inspire people along during yep. the People are feeling a bit low, like, oh, Saturday night, but I'm at home, I go out. Never mind, it's okay, we sing along. And let's... Yes, yes. Yeah, I think even more than just uh, all bringing, lift, uplifting the spirit and stuff, I think the community has also stepped in a lot to do, uh, for example, someone started an initiative called Blanja, Blanja Me or Blanja Your Friend or something like that. You know, where you just pay it forward and there's project pay it forward, two different project pay it forward. One is a major scale one, another one is a, a smaller scale um, version whereby the smaller version is um, this guy called Eric started to to um, get uh, food, maybe like um, rice and stuff for old folks. So he really deliver, get charity, get people to throw, come in with the funds and then he gave all this food to to the old folks during this tough period of time and then the another one is the major one whereby it's actually started by i think um carousel or, and noc night hour cinematics and a lot of major brands in fact all only all, all the big brands like only the big brands are, are with them so that one is the major one and then there's yeah. another small one both projects are called pay it forward yeah so and and this all these initiatives really really shows that um, whether you are a big organization, whether you are just a, a, a citizen, normal citizen at any part of the neighborhood, I think we all we all can come in, chip in our and play our part. Yes, indeed, indeed. I think uh, these are the ones that we know of that's the new, but there are many small ones here and there that are just quietly doing kind of um who, share all resources, take money, help groups that uh, are facing difficulty. For example, uh, even my at my workplace, my uh, work team heard about um, challenging conditions for the dormitories um, because mm. we have some dormitories working on the Changi development project. Um, so quickly sprung the action, um, got all of us to donate some money and then went out to buy some hundred per uh, big powerful pen for the workers uh, and got it shipped to dormitory so that they can actually have a better uh, living condition um, right. while being um, quarantined back in the dorms, like that. So that's also something that uh, is very ground up, very mm. spontaneous kind of um, um, you know, help. 
somebody said let's do it, everybody should it without question. Um, so so that's that's the beauty of uh, you know, um, all this good view that's happening around us. Right, right. So for, for viewers, if you have a ground up in, initiative or if you know of any ground ground up initiative that is not doing uh, marketing, that, that doesn't shout out to the world uh, yeah, because they want to be low profile, you know, uh, they, are, they are not the major one like uh, what SK has been doing, the major paid forward uh, thing, you know. Uh, let us know. Success Video Asia is really more than willing to use our platform to share, actually share out the news and the good work so that people know about it. And not that because we want to share it for people to know, but we can share it so that people can contribute to volunteer, to support, to help. You know, um, we are all in this together. I don't think any one of us is alone in this fight. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, coming to an um, almost time review is over. It's a uh, uh there's such good conversation going on but i, I want to know how or what is your current greatest wish well um i think the biggest wish now is that our infection rate in Singapore will drop zero or very low numbers single digit numbers uh in the next few weeks and by the end of the two months uh, breaker period, first June, whole country we are confident and we can safely walk out of this circuit breaker period, knowing that we have successfully conquered COVID as a nation, and mm. we can go back to our normal life, go back to mm. school, go back to work, go back to hopefully eat in restaurants and. Uh, go out to malls. Um, it's been tough on a lot of people, um, especially parents who have to juggle both work as uh, taking care of children. Uh, go back to visit our elderly. And I think uh, the things that when you don't have it, you realize how precious they are. So yes. the only way that we can make this happen, make this vision happen, we are all um, you know, resilient and we play our part by staying home and not going into crowded places, knowing that eventually we will reach there. So we want to be confident that we are out of the, the circuit breaker period, first June, we'll be out forever. We don't have to go back and trigger another one round anymore. So I think that's really, really, and I really hope that will be the case right right i yeah i think that is uh what i would wish for as well you know but speaking of that can i maybe i just ask you one more wish you know what is yeah. the first thing that you will do after circuit breaker what is the first um, thing that yeah. you will do after circuit breaker <laughs> yeah i think it's well i haven't really thought about it but um i guess maybe bring my parents out for a nice meal because they have been uh, staying at home for a long time. Mm, mm, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I think that will be that will be what my my family and I will be doing as well, uh, You know, the kids, the, the the kids are enjoying. My kids are enjoying the time at home for now. Uh -huh. I think that will, it will come to a point where they're sick of it, uh. Yeah, they're pretty much enjoying it now. But yep. Okay, so um. Before, before we say goodbye to the viewers, all right, is there something that you would like to say to the viewers in closure? Well, I, I'll say maybe three things. Firstly, stay positive and even though it's really difficult period, try to be kind and patient with each other as much as possible. Because uh, it's a period of stress, you can play up easily, so be kind and patient. Um, also, I think during this period, it's like actually, uh, you imagine it's actually a, a way to break many bad old habits and pick up new good habits. So after the COVID period, don't let all this go to waste. You know, you form all these good habits, continue with them. For example, uh, good hygiene practices, exercise mm. regularly, uh, you know, uh, volunteering, helping out 
things like that. I think these are good habits we should try to uh, keep. Maybe even work from home, home based learning, all this would be good changes that uh, we hope they will stay even after right. COVID. And I think the, the last part, the last thing I would want to say to everyone is we need to, as I said many times, the last one hour, stay united and uh, stay positive. Stay at home, stay safe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisan, for your wonderful time. And yeah, yeah, I hope the have a good time with you as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. So do you want maybe you can you want to say goodbye to your viewers? Right. So have a good rest, everyone. It's Saturday night. Uh turn in early. Have a good rest. And very soon we'll be out of this uh circuit breaker. Before you know it, you're out of it. So yes. just hang in there for a bit more. Yep, yep, we will. All right, thank you. Thank you, Lisan. Goodbye. Good night. Bye. Okay. All right. Um, yes, there we have um our kind uh guest who is with us, you know, uh really gracing our our show. Um, but she's not the last of our guests. We still have with us tomorrow um this lady called Mary Chu. So yes, Mary Chu will be with us. So to, um, tomorrow will be something a little bit different. Instead of talking about humans, we'll be talking more about uh, animals, about pets. You know, she's a ultra trail runner and a dog behaviorist and trainer. So tomorrow you will all be, you might be seeing three dogs on, on live, you know, my dog, her dog, you know, every dog together. Yeah, but it's really more talking into um, anxiety dogs or pets how are they behaving now at home you know with a sudden change of um habits with a sudden change of uh lifestyle you know while we are still at home uh, but used to uh, uh not being at home yeah so please do join us tomorrow please do join us tomorrow and we hope um you have a great time and once again uh wishing all the our muslim peers uh, a wonderful ramadan you know uh, i think it's you guys have already uh, broken fast and uh yeah have a have a great time it's it's not easy to like what lisan have said it's really not easy to actually um eat uh and and get into the community spirit as before because of the covid yeah but hanging there hanging there will be true will be over in in no time so yeah for the rest of you good night to all of you we'll see all of you at 8 p.m tomorrow evening Desmond signing out.